Hey guys, it's Ruffles Kerman, and today I don't like landing gear. Um, they glitch and they can blow up, and you can accidentally kill Jebediah on a mission, which definitely didn't just happen. Um, so today we're going to. That was the voice crack. <clears throat> today we're going to make a plane without landing gear because we are going to use hydrofoils instead. I got this inspiration from Matt Lowndes, one of his recent videos, where he used floats for a plane and made an amphibious SSTO, single stage to orbit, which didn't have landing gear either, or, well, it, it did, but just to get it off of the off the little launch pad, it used floats to try to float on the surface and take off. Now his problem was that he couldn't take it off, and it just didn't work, and the only way he got it off was by some weird flipping action and using the rocket engines to boost it straight up. So right now, I'm trying to use hydrofoils instead. Now the problem I'm having is that hydrofoils have a lot of friction in the water, which is unnecessary, and it's really hard to get them out of the water. So I did a bunch of tests, as you're seeing on screen, with different hydrofoils in different patterns, and none of them were working at all. And then a few of them did actually get off of the ground, or not ground, water, off of the water, but the ones that did, the problem was that the hydrofoils themselves, they, they caused too much lift and so it messed the plane up. So this one, it actually took off just like Matt Lowne's plane, but I don't want to be just like Matt Lowne. I want to be better than Matt Lowne. I want to be go above and beyond the standard of Matt Lowne. So that one little launch there did not do it for me, did not cut it, so I have to get it better. So this one I actually did take off as well, but the problem is that it's very unstable because of those extra hydrofoils, because those are just wings, so they add a bunch of lift, and that means when you try to fly it like a normal plane, it doesn't work. So when you try to pull up, it, it just stalls because there's too much lift on the front. One of the launches I actually got to space as well, but the problem with this launch was, again, the hydrofoil lift. Because the normal SSTO, the plane without the hydrofoils, that's a great plane itself, but when you add the wings, it causes it to be very unstable and it starts flipping when you try to get to orbit, which is bad. So I went back to the drawing board, tried a few different kinds of hydrofoils, and nothing worked. But in this instance, the plane flipped upside down, and I decided to just go with it. And it seemed pretty stable, so what I did was go back to the space plane hangar and literally just flip the plane upside down. It sounds really dumb, and it was a very dumb idea. But actually, with a few little tweaks and added pieces, moving pieces around, it works. I had to figure out how to get it off of the ground because you can't just take it off. What you do is I call the dip and pop maneuver because you dip under the water and then you turn on the rocket engines and you pop up. And then as soon as you're out of the, uh, out of the water, you can turn off the rocket engines because you don't want to waste the oxidizer. But that works, which is awesome. And so the next step in this test was to land it. And landing it, since it doesn't have hydrofoils, is a little sketchy, but it can fly really well because it doesn't have the weird lift from hydrofoils, so you can just hover over the water until you stall and fall into the water, but at that, that point you're going so slow that it doesn't hurt the plane. So there we go. This is a working amphibious SSTO, and unlike Matt Lowndes, it is not very hard to take off the water. I actually did it multiple times in a row pretty easily. It doesn't work 100% of the time, but the good thing is, if the dip and pop maneuver doesn't work, you just try again, because it doesn't hurt your craft at all. It's very easy, takes almost no oxidizer. So this is our plane we are going to use to beat Matt Lowndes' attempt to make an amphibious SSTO, and to make one that works and is reusable, and that you can actually take off the water with pretty good success rates. Also you can see I installed Waterfall for this uh, takeoff or for this mission, I guess, because Waterfall looks cool. So there, the first dip and pop maneuver didn't work, but we'll just try again, and the second one actually does work. I've been messing around with mods a little bit, and so I actually installed Parallax 2.0, and I was playing around with that, which is really cool, by the way. I would highly recommend it, as long as your computer wouldn't blow up from it. But Parallax 2.0 and Waterfall and Scatterer are all really nice. I don't like Waterfall in that when you look at the back of the plane, the engines will cause your vision to become blurry and it's really hard to see. Um, I like Real Plume better in that case, but Waterfall just looks so much better. 
by itself. So that's what I have installed for this mission. Speaking of going off on a tangent, in my last commentary I mentioned that maybe I should start a podcast and just talk about random things while playing KSP because that's what all KSP commentaries are in essence, and I actually got a lot of positive comments about that, so I am actually thinking of that, I just need something to talk about. So if you guys have any questions on how to play KSP or any good topics for my podcast, then let me know because... I could use those to actually start a KSP podcast. I also think it would be cool if I could do a podcast with Matt Lown, like a collab where we both are do- hosting the podcast, but he's a little more uh, famous than me. Um, so you know if you could subscribe and like this channel and um, join my non-existent membership and become my non-existent Patreon, that would be really great because then I could do a collab with Matt Lown. Yeah. I left in a lot of these shots because they're cool. I love how I just like got rid of that tangent really fast because I'm not going to be that guy. Um, anyway, with all of these graphics mods installed, you can get a lot of cool shots of your space plane. I didn't even talk about this space plane getting into orbit, but it did get into orbit and it was very stable because we didn't add hydrofoils. It is a hydrofoil SSCO, but the wings are the hydrofoils. They're sort of two in one, which is really cool. So Matt Lown, you know, if you ever need some inspiration on how to make an amphibious SST better, you could look at uh, the Ruffles Kerman YouTube channel. I would recommend it very highly. Um, anyway, I do like this space plane. I think it looks cool, and a lot of the engines are not at the center of mass. You can see they're sort of out. The nerve engines are in between in terms of high and low, in between the two out, out, word, outside engines, and then the three inside engines. Wow, I cannot speak. Um, which seems to make it unstable because all the engines are then off the center of mass, but actually that was how I made it a little more stable, and as a bonus, it just looked really cool. Also, as a pro tip, do not put out your air brakes like I'm doing right now when you're entering the atmosphere because air brakes have a habit of blowing up when the heat, so they should only be used low when you're flying around and you need to break, not high when you're entering the atmosphere, because then they blow up. But those are the only things that blew up. They haven't even blown up. I'm still talking about it. Um, anyway, those are the only things that are going to blow up on this plane. Everything else is fine. And that was just due to me and an unfortunate lack of brain. This whole recording, it's been very tempting to go off on a tangent. I've just had so many things to talk about this SSTO because it's not a usual SSTO. Look, it's flipping. Um, it likes to go in backwards. Um, but that's fine because then the curbles are fine. To get back to my tangent, it's been very tempting to talk about random stuff, but this SSTO just has too much to talk about itself because it's very unique. So I feel like I've been sort of all over the place. I guess this is just practice for my podcast then. Anyway, we are passed through the upper atmosphere and we've now slowed down to reasonable speeds, so it's time to come in for a landing. As I said before, with this plane, it's very stable, especially without a lot of fuel. It's pretty easy to just hover it over the surface and then bleed off all its airspeed until the tails hit the water and then the front hits the water. You do pull a bit of G's, but you know how Kerbals are, they can pull up to a few thousand G's, and they'll still be alright, their plane may not be, but they'll still be alright. So anyway, that's this plane landed after a successful mission starting from the water and ending from the water, and the only pieces we lost were some air brakes, which we didn't need anyway, because who cares about slowing down. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed this plane, I'll try to leave a craft file in the description. Um, please like and subscribe and have a great rest of your day.